Hello everyone, Chris Assis here, and today we're going to be looking at uh, the element of the cross. Uh, it might be the cross step, where you actually shift the weight over, you cross your legs and shift over. It might be uh, crossing as an embellishment while you're walking, either to the front or to the back. So it is a very, this video is a very tangle based in its, um, in, in terms of activity, uh, but I'm using the, um, the, the cross element to help us understand how the leg uh, moves inside the hip. So if we can you have a, a picture of your hips, uh, an image of your hips in your mind, or you can you know, Google it um, and, and see a picture. There is no straight line. There, um, there are surfaces that are um, curved, and with one surface, you know, gets in, in, in relationship with another surface. And if we want to have effortless movement and not cause any injuries, not get into any trouble. We want to keep these surfaces married in a way while we're moving. So not to block them, but to, to keep them in position because there is always going to be uh, movement with, within them, uh, but to allow for that movement to happen um, efficiently. Um, and um, uh, the cross, I think, uh, will give us an opportunity to explore uh, the the way of the leg moving inside our hip. Uh, and I'm using my shoulder as an example because they're quite similar joints. Uh, and give us an opportunity to work on some embellishments and to work on something that we use a lot, the cross step um, in tango. So, you know, uh, really uh, filled with really good stuff video so you can explore more um, I'll give you some links so you can explore more towards the hip mobility and if you if you want to go there um, and if not you can focus more on the tangos the the tango side of this video if you we will be exploring so this this area the hips and the legs and all that so if you have any questions if you've had any trouble like any pain in the hips um in the knees uh, anywhere along the the line of the leg in the lower back there are spots where trouble might show up because we have been doing some some things in not the most efficient ways and we might have been carrying some bad habits send me an email try to make it as um, uh, um, as detailed as possible so we can have an understanding of uh, how things happen when what you were doing and what have you and this can inspire more videos and uh, hopefully it will help uh, more people that might be having similar trouble with you so Looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing from you, and I hope you will enjoy this as much as I did. Enjoy! So let's get started with something not as obvious as the movement itself. So usually what happens is that when we uh, start these, um, uh, start lifting our knee up, we usually try to keep our, our knee straight to the front. But in reality, and I hope you'll be able to see this uh, here, the knee, um, as it comes closer to our chest, naturally opens up. And that is what allows for my leg, for, the, for my foot to uh, cross over and come down. So as you can see, I'm not doing any funny business at the, at the level of the calf or, um, or anything like that, but it's these movements the 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 coming up and crossing over there smoothly married married together and that is because of the shape of uh, the of, of of our of our bones and how the surface of the leg bone and the hip bone they come together if you have an image of how our hips and our legs are you know that they're not square so how is would it be possible for this movement to be clean cut so try to find this mating, this relationship in movement, and especially when you're balancing on one foot, 
sometimes we tend to block, try, try as much as you can to avoid that. So let's put it into a little bit more of a tango uh, real, real environment. Um, we're going to be walking backwards and crossing in front, and we're going to be walking forward and crossing at the back. In any case, you want to make this uh, part of your of your walk. So don't uh, don't if you feel that you have to stop in order to cross, something is uh, something might be slightly off. So make it part of your walking rhythm and um, for this to happen what will uh, what will help a lot is to allow for the hips to move I hope that you're able to see it here see how how my hips are not saying square but there is a little bit of a rotation let's see maybe here from the side you'll be able to see it a little better I'm not sure, hopefully. Uh, so the hips are not staying square. On the contrary, there is a little bit of a, a gentle twist, very gentle forward and backwards. And there's also a little bit of a upward and downward flow. So maybe here you'll be seeing it a little bit better. So, so there is a little bit of a twist and that allows for the leg to um, come in and rebound outward again. Now the second thing is as you're standing, as you're um, making that little cross, try to notice what happens on the standing on the standing side. Oftentimes we think oh I need to hold my balance and um, we don't allow for any uh, any movements to happen on that standing side, but this is not exactly how things are. You want to, if you want to make this part of the movement, you will need to allow for your knee to bend um, on the standing side, and you will need to allow for a little bit of movement in the standing hip, so you can accommodate that little bit of a of a. a of a cross that you want to create. So there is movement um, and you're balancing through movement and in that position you are always ready not to stop but to continue progressing forward or backwards of course. So find a position where you can feel that your leg and your, your leg bone and your hip bone are comfortably mating through movement. Things are not very much different uh, when we're actually shifting the weight, but because we are shifting the weight, things are going to become a little bit more obvious. So I think you can see it quite clearly here how the hips move when the weight is being shifted. So you cross over. This is usually where we get things wrong. So let's see it again. Usually we try to stay square here, but squareness will not help. Instead, you need to create that little bit of a rotation. Let's see. If you go square, you're going to get stuck. But if you go with a little bit of a rotation, doesn't matter if you want to, you know, do the um, lapis or not, like I'm doing, but um, the release cannot be square. You can make it nice and fancy, or you can keep it quite simple. Let's see it once again. It doesn't come from the foot. It comes from the hip. So we place our toes down. Oops, there we go. <laughs> we place our toes down. We start shifting the weight. Don't get stuck here. Allow for that little bit of a rotation. Now, the second thing is um, here, how do we find that rotation? Where do we find it? Remember right, before, right a few seconds ago, I was talking about that um, comfortable mating of the, of the leg bone and the hip. 
So what we mean about that is if we're press if our leg bone is pressing forward, then we feel a little bit, a little bit of tension at the front of the pelvis. If uh, we're sinking into the hip, uh, then we feel a little bit of tension in the side, in the side of the hip. And uh, if we're if it's the the leg bone is rotated back and pressing back, we feel a little bit of pressure at the back. So we feel great tightness in the hips and um, pain, and we tend to get stuck because we cannot free the leg because of how it is positioned inside our hip. So when you're standing and before you, um, when you're standing and just doing your cross or right before you start shifting the weight, you want to find um, a placement. Uh, you want to feel how your leg uh, feels inside that hip and you find, want to find a position that is comfortable and it feels as if it's centered inside the hip and it has space around it. It will be a placement that uh, gives you security, uh, but doesn't block you. It's not a position that you have to hold, but you can comfortably be in it. And uh, it allows you to be strong, secure, and ready to move. So let's go ahead and isolate that movement uh, of, of the cross, the same way we see it in a uh, cross step. And notice how your knees come together and where your toes are aligned. And see that rotation that I was talking about right before. But don't try to find it in the feet. So don't break the line of the ankle. Instead, try to find it in the hip, just like we talked about before. Now, uh, this drill is very important in another way as well. To find um, how we transfer the weight uh, from one foot to the other um, when we are not only in a cross, but generally speaking. So as you can see, as I'm coming in from the back, the baby toe, I hope I'm saying that properly. The baby toe is the first one to come down and then we roll towards the big toe. And the same thing interestingly happens on the opposite side. So the reason for that is, see right there, uh, how our legs, how our feet are built. They are built to receive our weight f on the outer part, in the outer part, and then to propel our weight forward or backward or whichever way from the inner part. And that is why there is a lot more cushion on the outer side, on the outer part of the, of the foot, and not much cushion on the inner part where we have our arch. So try to try to see how that uh, perspective, how that understanding, how that the how that um, information and um, of the articulation of the foot changes not only your shifts of weight here, but also in your walks. It always happens that way. It doesn't have to do with uh, how your feet might be structured. All our feet are structured in the same way. But, of course, um, it happens with everyone. It happens to everyone. We all carry bad habits that might have um, created patterns that are not as effective as the initial pattern. But these exercises and bringing your conscious mind to them will help you slowly, gradually change those habits around.